about fasting I would like to have a few words discussion on fasting with you guys um, the verses related to fasting mostly it is uh, their cluster of verses in chapter 2 uh, between verse uh, 183 and 187 I think uh, 189 maybe also related to the uh, moon and <clears throat> now uh, I took little notes, I don't want to go. One, uh, first, what is fasting? Uh, within uh, the verses, it is obvious that fasting is uh, not eating and drinking and not having sexual intercourse during daytime. And uh, from dawn, where you can distinguish the dark from light, the line of darkness from the light of the, uh, from the line of light, uh, until night. Now the question is whether n what is night? Layl. Uh, some people discuss this and they have uh, some confusion regarding this one. The Quran talks about day, day, and also daylight and night. Uh, day is whole, tw 24 hours let's say approximately, and has two subcategories. One is daylight, we call it day, this confusion in English, the same word for two different things, and night. Either it is night, if it's not night, it is day. Basically, they complement each other. Um, three, if uh, one day, full day, is 360 degrees, uh, daylight would be, let's say, 150 degrees, night would be 210 degrees. Or, let's say, one is uh, in, during equinox time, one is 180, the other will be 180. Basically, the total, both of them, would add up 360 degrees. Therefore, either it is day or night. If it is day, it is, uh, it is not night. If it is night, it is not night, it is day. And uh, it is like tautology. Um, <clears throat> But each have also subcategories. Night have degrees, evening, and then dark of the night, midnight, something like that. Day, uh, day, daytime, daylight, you can say early morning or noon or afternoon. These are basically different subcategories of these two categories. And the Quran says until night, and night starts from sunset and goes until basically sunrise where the Quran explains the darkness separates from the whiteness of the light when the sun rises down and uh, therefore you don't need to wait until darkness of the night with the sunset maybe give few minutes uh, the time you see and um, break your fast and uh, <clears throat> as far as uh, for the number of days the verse, I think, 183 talks about ayam and ma'adudat, uh, means uh, numbered days. Based on that, some people speculate whether they are fewer than a month, uh, than 30 days, whether they are 10 days or something like that. Um, I have difficulty to, um, to accept this interpretation because uh, in following verses, it talks about Ramadan, and um, the verse says, if any of you witness uh, the month, فَلْيَسُمْهُ let him uh, fast that month. فَلْيَسُمْهُ Therefore, it is talking and referring to the whole month. Who is a, a pronoun, it goes to the word month, Shahr, and uh, therefore, from there you can tell that the whole month should be fasted. It doesn't say fal yasum minhu or badahu, a part of it or from it, but says it should fast it should keep it fasted. Fast. Anyway, uh, that's it uh, about the time. Uh, the period of the Ramadan. Um, other is uh, some people, especially I don't know whether in this country, but uh, atheists challenge the Quran. They say, well, it is written by human because the author of the Quran could not anticipate that there could be longer and long 
longer days and shorter nights or the other way around and therefore this verse um, <clears throat> uh, defines the time of the fasting with the sunset and sunrise uh, based on that you cannot fast while you are uh, in close to the North Pole when there are months daylight you see um, it seems kind of they want to really show contradiction in the Quran or lack of detail the problem is these people do not think that the Quran doesn't list all the uh, exceptions of the things, possible exceptions, usually general rule and leave us through our mind to decide the certain exceptions or details. Now the Quran says take evolution, well it doesn't talk about uh, how wash your hands and arms if someone doesn't have arm amputated, how that person will take evolution? Well, guess what? Will not take evolution. Simple. If you know about the Quran, logic of the Quran is very simple. These things are not the essence. For example, the Quran says, if you cannot find water, no problem. Just make the intention, Tayyamu. Have the intention that as if you are washing with water, it is a mental, going through mental certain uh, rituals, thing, processes, in order uh, you are trying to kind of focus on the upcoming prayer. That's it. Without water, you can't do. Without army, then you will not do. <laughs> Simple. And this one, then the question is, well, if I ask you, can you fast three months? No, I will die. Well, you don't need to die. Will you get sick? Of course. More than one day, two days, it will be very difficult. Well, it is very difficult. Will you get sick? Well, the Quran already addresses this issue, says, if you are sick or traveler, then another day, you can fast another day. Or, if you can afford it, feed the needy, people who are in need. Mesakin means those who stay at home, those who are either handicapped or jobless. They need some help, go help them, feed them food and give them some charity. That's it. That means the Quran knows already if you are so. Of course you cannot fast. Not only sick, you may even die. But the Quran says, simple. Uh, in fact, the following verse says, God doesn't want to make difficult for you. He wants to make easy for you. Simple. But what is easy, what is difficult? God lets you decide on that one. There is no definition of that. You are the decider. You don't do it as a chore. You do it as good for you. It builds character. You learn how to make decision and go along with that decision. It gives you a chance to break your habits, eating habits. You go eat, drink without any calculation, without any control. Then it gives you a chance to control your habits of eating and drinking from morning until evening. It resets and retunes your body and give you a chance after Ramadan to control your habits better. At least you got into the discipline and also appreciate the blessings that you may not have appreciated while eating all the time without any deprivation. Many, many be benefits of it. Therefore, you are not doing it as a chore and you are not doing even for God. You are doing for God advise you it is good for you. You are doing it for yourself, in fact. God doesn't need your fasting. God doesn't benefit anything. God doesn't need. Therefore, um, the issue is another issue, how sick you are. What is the definition of sickness? The Quran doesn't give that one too. Well, God says the Quran is mufassal, detailed. Now you say, why God does not list all the sicknesses there? Well, if God gives all the details that you wanted, that you think that then, or another person want another person, then the, the book will be thousands of volumes. Then you, atheist that time, or you 
other uh, silly guy who is uh, obsessed with trivial things, he would say, why these thousands of volumes of scripture? We cannot even read them all our life. How can we understand how we can follow? He would say that. Therefore, the book, the Quran, is a book guidance. And God doesn't want you to put your brain in a basket of faith and not think for your own. These books let you also in charge. You decide whether you are sick or not. If you feel you are sick, okay, you are sick, then no. But if you are not sick, you want to act like sick you are, you cannot really fast one day. Do you think you can fool God? You are fooling yourself. You are depriving yourself from experience such a wonderful thing that it will improve your soul, your spirit. It will build your character. Then you will be ready to go to heaven, join God. Otherwise, with these kind of things, and with especially charity and other things, they are component, they are not separate. You cannot keep fasting and hoarding good in your home and uh, or your account, banking account, and while there are hungry people around, we need to give always charity. In fact, you need to work for a just society that there will not be a single person who is hungry and homeless and sick in a society where we have skyscraper, we have billions of dollars to spend for destruction, for weapons, we waste so much food and things in restaurants and in hospitals, so many places. Therefore, it is a sick society. It is an ethical society that allows some member of the society go hungry. If there are extra food here and there, which there are in almost every society, the hunger is because of either mismanagement and corruption and also greed of some people. I saw a picture of, incredible picture, mountains of food, mountains of grain in sacks, sacks. Millions of tons, I'm not exaggerating. In India, they were thrown on the land to be rotten. Why? Because somehow it was surplus. And the government is, does, does not even give away to people because according to the re recommendation of capitalist consultants, the bankers, if you go to people, then the price will go down. Let it go down, let people have it. What you are wasting is already a harvested crop or store it somewhere. It's unbelievable amount of waste. Anyway, that's... Uh, the purpose of fasting is uh, to be able to be charitable and also to be very kind and nice to people and be God conscious. You cannot be angry with people. You, you must be very tolerant and nice and kind to your family members, neighbors and friends and anyone you meet. And uh, another issue is, um, I want to close this, uh, about 60 days in sectarian teachings according to fabricated hadith. If you break your fast in, after you decide that you fast, let's say by noon or even afternoon, if you break your fast, you're expected, you owe <laughs> as punishment to fast 60 consecutive days, 60, and one day also for the one making up. This is absolutely made up, has nothing to do with the Quran. The Quran says if you cannot fast, then another day. Or if you will not be able to do it, then feed the, if you can afford, you have money, feed the poor, that's it. God doesn't forget if it was such an important thing, it would be in the Quran in the, among those verses. And uh, this is made up, and unfortunately, this is really one of the deterrent things for many people to even start fasting. For example, you may go to work, you, you may be able to handle fasting, but since if you think about 60 days punishment, if you just start fasting and go, let's say, one hour later, it is, you got thirsty or it is hot and you break it, that you need to also do uh, 60 days of fasting, consecutive days, then you say, the, the better I will not start. Satan made many things difficult to really practice. By this way, made people, it seems kind of encouraging people, but just the other way around.
For example, in Ramadan in Turkey, people go to the mosque after uh, breaking their fast. They pray 20 extra units after the one is already exaggerated 13 units. Four for uh, night prayer they pray. Before that, four units and four night prayer. And then uh, two and plus three more, total 13 units of prayer by itself is long. And in addition, in Ramadan, they add 20 more. In fact, <laughs> some imams means those who just make money by just leading prayer, praying with people, leading the prayer. They make money for what? For nothing. Their production is zero, contribution to society is zero. In fact, negative contribution. They tell all kinds of stupid stories. They distort people's mind. They put a lot of viruses in their brain. All backward stories. And uh, these people, in order to show off, some of them, they recite uh, chapters in the Quran. The whole, basically, by the end of the uh, Ramadan, uh, they plan to finish the whole Quran. Since it is about 600 pages, if in, in every unit, they recite about two pages is long. Imagine 20 units, 40 pages of Quran they recite. Uh, it is basically torture. It's just bowing down, exercise, no mental concentration, no thinking about their relationship with God or what they are doing the following day in their work, in their stuff. They continue their, unfortunately, crimes and sins after this uh, so-called mass exercise or prayer. Anyway, another um, issue I want to share with you, kefaret, there is no such a thing, it means 60 days. Once I remember when I was young, I was an activist in 1979, summer, uh, we were uh, organizing a, a rally and big demonstration in one of the towns in Turkey, Mush, small town and it was far from Istanbul. I went there um, and then be a few days before I was organizing, preparing slogans and graffitis, uh, pamphlets and organizing uh, the activists for the, uh, to have the security or uh, the speakers and all those things. And I was fasting. The night before I had very little sleep and I got very thirsty. It was very hot. And um, we were also shouting slogans, and uh, we start moving up. It was it's, uh, <clears throat> uh, upward, slanted. Uh, what's it called? I forgot the name of it. Anyway, it was about uh, three, four miles. I was so thirsty I couldn't handle. Always I was thinking about 60 days punishment. I almost killed myself, goodness sake. People, many people get kidney disease because of that. Uh, kidney stones. Uh, I drank. It was first time I broke my fast while I was Sunni. And then, sure, I couldn't really find time and energy to have 60 consecutive days. And I felt always as if I am owing something to God. And while I was in prison, I was able to take advantage of prison time. 60 consecutive days I fasted that time. Anyway, fasting is a beautiful thing. I thank God for this opportunity that allows me to stop, interrupt uh, my habits and be able to know what I am doing or what I should do. And hopefully after Ramadan, by the end of the Ramadan, I will be losing white, uh, some weight and I will try to keep that way, inshallah. Interestingly, in many countries, in so-called Muslim countries, people eat more in Ramadan than they eat in other times. Unbelievable. Instead of losing weight, they are gaining weight. From evening until morning, they eat and eat and eat. It is just sickening. Unbelievable. Just defies the whole purpose of fasting. Anyway, see you inshallah next time. Peace.